Hello, Hawaii. I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm your new friend as we journey to ask, why forks over knives? We are coming to you live from downtown Honolulu from the studios of Think Tech Hawaii. Today, our topic of discussion will be on how what we eat makes all the difference in the world in our health and the health of our planet. And what I would like you to take away from today's discussion is the idea that the bottom line, there is no deprivation, no sacrifice, and nothing but advantages, including saving your health, medical costs, and how your taste changes once you've been introduced to really healthy foods. Today, we are very honored to welcome Dr. Ruth Heydrich, a vegan for 38 years, a runner for 50 years, and an Ironman triathlete. She's the author of five books, including A Race for Life, She's a chef for her book, a recipe book, of course, uh, and senior living, life long running, and 10 steps to sexual fitness. Wow. Welcome aboard, Ruth Hagrid. <laughs> Thank you, Wendy. It's so good to be here. Yeah, and, and you know, let me just explain to our guest. You know, I was very blessed because I did a talk at a vegan uh, a, a gardening club, and I met this one gentleman and then he called and he says, hey, Wendy, I want to bring a friend over. And when the doorbell rang and I opened the door, I'm like, you look so familiar. I know you. Where do I know you from? And she goes, I'm Ruth. I go, yeah, you're Ruth. You're the lady from Forks Over Nice. I was like blown away that you were at my door, Ruth. I was so honored. And unlike others, I, I don't know how many of them are like me, but I speak on you. I speak on your documentary that you were represented in. I do it weekly and I call the documentary the greatest love story of all and that's how I share it with everyone I call it the greatest love story because when I find local couples or you know families I said you what you do is if you're gonna help and work with me and you want help towards your journey on, on goodness take two hours of your day early in the day not late at night when you're tired sit down on the sofa get the whole family together hold hands and watch this together as a family unit. And I encourage everyone, if anyone knows me, they can attest and confirm this because I truly believe that it is the greatest love story because as husbands and wives, they're lovers, they're best friends, they're partners for lives. They're not nurses and doctors for each other. They should go through their life growing old in health and not in sickness. And Forks Over Knives, the documentary, wow. is exactly that. So before we jump into that, Ruth, I just want you to tell me what was, I know you were diagnosed with cancer and that's why you were probably on that video and mm -hmm. sharing your journey, but what was it like before being diagnosed with cancer? Actually, life was pretty good before. <laughs> I was uh, in graduate school at the University of Hawaii working on my PhD. I was doing some part-time modeling and some acting. Uh, I was actually able to get cast in one of diff three different episodes of Hawaii Five O. Wow! <laughs> look at that girl. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was uh, me at age 33 wow. with James MacArthur in front of the Kahala Hilton Hotel, where uh, the, my best scene was was seen, where I was blown up in a T-bird. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Exploding and, and you know how we set that up anyway. Wow. So life was, was pretty good then. I was also into running. At that point, at age 47 mm -hmm. later, um, I had been a runner for 14 years. And so and I was doing pretty good as, as a runner. Um, we have should have a picture of me there. Wow. Yeah. yeah That's I was, your life as a runner. As huh? a runner, yeah. Look and at that. I thought, you know, lean, fit, healthy, um, that I was going to live as, as long or longer than my grandparents who right. lived to their nineties. I thought, man, I've got this all figured out. Wow. And so you might imagine the shock that I went through when I felt a big lump in my breast. Wow. And it I know it wasn't there the last time I checked, you know, however long ago that was. Mm -hmm. And I immediately got into the doctor and he felt it and he said, why did you wait so long to come in? And I said, I just had a negative mammogram. I, anyway, um, they did a biopsy 
Wow. And uh, the results are on this graph that's about and this to come next up. slide. Let me see that. <laughs> that's like no. Yep, that's, that's like a uh, death warrant for yeah, you. I'm yep. sure it was over five centimeters, and we don't normally think in centimeters, but that's over five inches in wow. diameter that's that's pretty big that's pretty big Ruth. yeah 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 so it was really scary and after the diagnosis they did the scans test and it had spread to my bones my liver uh one lung and i was thinking i all of a, from one day to the next when life is so good so great all of a sudden healthy now, as you know and yeah, now running doing everything yeah right, I didn't smoke I didn't drink I, and I was the healthiest person I knew in terms of lifestyle and and now all of a sudden stage four breast cancer oh my gosh so yeah. did they just say hey Ruth you know um, there's not a whole lot left for us to do with you right oh, now no, chemo chemo and radiation chemo, is right. what and what they wanted to do but right at that point I happened to, I had medical leave and I was looking at a local newspaper and I saw this three line ad said wanted women with breast cancer to participate in diet research. Mm -hmm. yes. And I thought, that's me, I just been diagnosed. So I ran to the phone. It was a 262 d telephone number, <laughs> Kailua. Like then you knew and, it was Kailua. <laughs> yeah, there's no cell. And uh, it, the, a man picks up the phone. He, this is Dr. McDougall. And a wow, lot of people another here will icon will in the health industry. Yeah, Dr. McDougall. And he said, Get your medical records. I want to talk to you. So uh, I spent two hours with him, walked out a vegan it, wow. overnight, changed my diet. And I'm thinking, you know, it wasn't any of this resistance or how can I give up anything. He convinced me that this was going to save my life. Wow. and that I would not need any chemotherapy and radiation because of the long-term damage that it does and it doesn't cure the problem it doesn't get right. to what caused the problem right. which is the sad diet now, a lot of people know that that stands for standard American mm -hmm. diet <laughs> and so um, it just meant getting rid of all the animal products, especially dairy, because all the hormones in dairy that yes. make calves grow 600 pounds in six months yeah. does that to humans too. <laughs> I mean, you walk around the street and you see lots of evidence of that. Right. So it was actually, it was easy for me. Uh, I just, I looked at any, anybody eating a piece of steak and I thought, you know, that used to be a live, living, sentient creature. How yes. can people do that to right. animals? Right. Then see how I'd shifted my perspective? Yes. Uh, it just changed everything. And of course, wow. now with climate change, we know uh, we could spend hours just talking about that. But And Ruth, it, back then, you know, you were in a class of yourself to oh make boy. that decision. Oh and boy. it wasn't readily available, all the options that we have today. No. But how amazing of you to get such profound information and put it into use and not just yeah. say nah that it can't be or but within, too hard as you do. mentioned the first, the two next two hours you looked and you studied and then that day you became a vegan yep yep wow that is yeah i wish more people were as brilliant as you <laughs> and more people would not suffer well you know so i had much. that medical gun to my head <laughs> mm -hmm. and he said if you want to save your life change your diet and that just kept going through my head I'm changing my diet. I'm wow. saving my life. But many people have that medical gun on yep. their head, yep. and they still yeah. go back yeah. to their old ways of life. But the, the, the oncologist said, you know, you might have only three months, maybe three years. We just don't know how much longer. So I'm thinking, if I'm going to die, yes. there's something I you really You must have a bucket list. I yeah. had a bucket list back And now then. you revert to your bucket list. <laughs> what am I going to do if I, if I don't make the next three months? What was on that bucket list for you, Ruth? It was running the Great Wall of China. Oh, oh, In fact, I that. almost wore that T-shirt uh, because it says, I ran the Great Wall. Wow. <laughs> it's my second favorite T-shirt. There you are. Look at you. <laughs> yeah. Trim, fit, and beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Wow. It was such a, a exhilarating, ex a peak experience. I, uh, remember it like it was yesterday running along the wall a little little elderly Japanese 
Chinese man started running along with me. I don't know what he was speaking. I guess it had to be <laughs> Chinese. <laughs> and he's jabbering along, laughing, and, and I'm laughing. I'm saying, I can't believe it. Here I am, 47 years old, just been diagnosed with stage four breast cancer, and I'm running on the Great Wall of China. Who wow. would have ever believed all this could happen? Wow. And I'm fit and healthy, still running, and of course, at this point, I had never heard of anything called um, the Ironman Triathlon. Oh, wow. <laughs> so now let me ask you, when you were diagnosed, it was like about how long? Three weeks? A month later that you decided to go to China and three continue? Weeks, yeah. Three weeks. Yeah. Okay. So at that point, you already started veganism. Oh, yeah. Then that, okay. that day. That yeah. day. <laughs> yeah. So now you've been a vegan for three three weeks yeah yeah okay yeah and then you decide to go on this trip now when you went to china was it difficult finding food to eat there oh yeah it, it was. was yeah it was challenging uh because all the rice was white mm -hmm. <laughs> they oh, brown said rice. oh f f brown rice is for prisoners and peasants no <laughs> uh, so you know i ate the white rice dr mcdougall said if that's all you can get that that's, that's good enough a lot of chinese lived hundreds of years on yes. white rice so yes. i ate a lot of rice and i uh, asked for all kinds of veggies the chinese range of vegetables bok choy wan bok uh choy sum uh, they're so, yeah, choy, yeah. They're, yeah so i just said make me in restaurants just make me a big plate of chinese vegetables and rice Right. And it was delicious. Right. It really was. I would have so. thought that it would have been great, uh, uh, easier access in Asia. Because, yeah. uh, yes, they do stir fry with a lot of meats to enhance the flavor. Yeah. But it's right. cut up and in a little bit. But yeah. you can always ask them no meat and exactly. just garlic exactly. or just veggie stir fry. Yeah. And they can do that. And you right. got the fresh veggies coming out, yeah. you know, just slightly al dente, yeah. uh, as we call it, with yeah. rice. And yeah. I think that would be perfect for yeah. your diet. Yeah and water for beverage. Everybody else in, in the tour group was drinking sodas and wine and beer, and I'm drinking just plain water, and wow. it's, it's fine. It's nature's wow, that's, perfect beverage. That's exciting, that's yeah. exciting. <laughs> Let's move on. So now you're, now you're excited, you're a runner, and so now you hear this thing called triathlon. <laughs> yeah. Well, again, I hadn't gone back to work yet, so mm -hmm. that's when I had time to watch TV. And so at this point, I'm going through the newspaper. I thought, this is how I found Dr. McDougall and the diet. I wonder what else I'm missing. And uh, so I was watching TV and just spinning through the dial and came across the ABC Wide World of Sports. And here was a runner. Wow. And I thought, oh, wow. And it turned out I had started in the program two thirds of the way through. Okay, and at uh, that point, yeah, Ruth, yeah. I'm going to stop you oh. two thirds away into your <laughs> new discovery. And we're going to yeah. take a short one minute break. And when we come back, we'll find out what you did to change everything more around. All right, so we'll be right back. <laughs> Aloha, I'm Dalen Yanagita, one of our hosts of our Business in Hawaii talk show on the Think Tech Hawaii. The theme of Business in Hawaii is to share with you stories of local businesses by local people. And our guests share with us their journey to building a successful business right here at home. We are streamed live on Think Tech weekly at 2 p.m. on Thursdays. Thank you so much for watching our show. I am Dalen Yanagita, and we'll look forward to seeing you then. Aloha and welcome back to all of you there. And today we have uh, with me Ruth Heidrich, who is a, I want to call her a celebrity in her own right, especially in my heart and mind, and to many others on the health journey. But before we, when we got started here on the show, we found out that she was a three time uh, guest on Hawaii Five O with Bookum Dano. And she had a life that was just full of running and great. I mean, if you look at her, she was beautiful, young and healthy. And then all of a sudden she got that diagnosis of stage four cancer. 
And then she didn't know what to do. She found a little ad in the paper, a three-liner, and it says, for breast cancer um, patients, please call and we want to make uh, and put you on a study. And it was by her blessings, Dr. McDougall. And again, another forefront runner for the health journey yeah. and starting here in Hawaii, in Kailua. So she was very, very blessed to find him and being directed in the right direction. And after two hours meeting with him, she became a vegan. She changed her lifestyle because of what he shared with her as with all the research and um, made a drastic uh, change in her life. That was 38 years ago. 38, 38 years, years ago. So she I, was I think diagnosed it's working. <laughs> at 47 years old and then 38 years later she's thriving and well and just beautiful. And so I was so excited to make uh, her acquaintance and I just want to honor her her journey, and I want to encourage others that if she could be as wise to see, the, seek this information and find it and implement in her life. Look at the quality of life that she has now at 85 years old. When mm -hmm. they said, go home and tell your kids and go do your bucket list items because there's not a lot of time for you. But she got the right information from Dr. McDougall. She acted on it. So as I always say, success is not being success is not just being at the right place at the right time, which she was. Success is being at the right place at the right time and taking action as she did. And thus, here she is at 85 years old, yep. thriving, swimming, running, walking, breathing healthily. <laughs> and so that's what we want for all of you. But she's here to share her journey with us. So before we went on break, um, she was going to share with us the little journey of her start to running. Yeah. Okay, take running it away, Ruth. Triathlons. <laughs> triathlons. <laughs> yeah. Oh, craziness. Yeah. Iron Man triathlons. Yeah. <laughs> I was watching television and saw uh, the, it was the third ever Iron Man triathlon. And this was, uh, it was actually in Honolulu where it all started. But uh, by the time I, got into it well actually i watched the the running part and realized this was like the honolulu marathon well i'd run the honolulu marathon a bunch of times and i thought oh, i know how to swim i learned how to swim at age two or three in lanikai where we lived right on the beach and i thought anybody can ride a bicycle <laughs> i had an old rusty bike in the garage and i thought you know i'm gonna tried doing the Ironman triathlon. And then I found out by contacting them, Valerie Silk was the director at the time, uh, no woman as old as I. This was a sport for young people. Uh, no one as old as I had ever done it before at that time. And no cancer patient obviously had ever done it and no vegan had ever done it and i thought what an <laughs> opportunity <laughs> that is right in front of me all i have to do is add to my running which i was still doing every day and even at, while i was in the hospital the nurses thought i was crazy because i brought my running clothes with me and even after the surgery i I got back right back into running so it was my savior in terms of wow. the stress the anxiety it allowed me to sleep at night so I added biking and swimming to my routine and wow. found out there were a few others on Oahu in Honolulu that were doing this so I worked out with them and the, the, this was 1982 and then 1983 you had to qualify you know you can't just sign up and say i'll do it you had to qualify so in 83 there was the half iron man that was the windward triathlon in kailua mm -hmm. and so i entered that got a first place and <laughs> uh that qualified me for the iron man for 1984. so that uh, just kept up my training and uh it crossed the finish line of that Ironman triathlon, which I have a picture of. Yeah, there you go. right Ooh, there. Bragging rights. And, oh my gosh! I mean, yeah. this, this was. Let's see. What we start at seven in the morning. Right. And you have to finish in seventeen hours. Well, this was 
my first one was a little over 14 hours. Okay. So that's a long time. That's a long so time. So that was 9 o'clock at night when I crossed the finish line. But the main thing is and, you crossed. Oh, and, and, so, and just... I wasn't wiped out. I wasn't tired, sick, uh, limping. Must be that vegan yeah, diet, yeah, girl. Yeah. The recovery rate and is I'm, so, so I'm much telling quicker. All these other people, vegan, vegan. What? What's that? <laughs> what do you mean? You you got it. Where are you from? <laughs> you got to eat. Yeah, <laughs> another planet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you have to. You need meat for the protein. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I said. Do I look protein deficient? <laughs> <laughs> you go, girl. Yeah. <laughs> and so now that wasn't enough. And yeah. so you got word that there are Ironmans throughout the world. And no, actually, I didn't know it. You that didn't know point, yet <laughs> uh, because I'd gotten a trophy. Uh, Continental Airlines contacted me, and and they said uh, we'd like to sponsor you. The, wow. They have an Ironman in New Zealand, and we'd like to send you there to do the Ironman there. I said, my gosh, and here, all these other athletes would have died to get an offer like of that course. to be sponsored. By Continental. So, yeah, any, any sponsor. <laughs> and so they, sure enough, sent me there. And I, while I was there, they, there was one newspaper in all of New Zealand, it's the New Zealand Herald. And on the front page the next morning, there's this picture, almost the full front page of me. and and. Uh, Ruth, a woman of iron, was this wow. two-inch headline across the top. Ooh, you go, and, uh, oh my gosh! So I came back to Hawaii, went to the Continental Airlines office, laid that on his desk. Dennis looks at that and he says, "Don't they have an Iron Man in Japan?" Oh, <laughs> that's <laughs> how you went to Japan. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God! They sponsored and, I'm you thinking, again. Yeah, I'm thinking. I just did Kona in October. I just did. Uh, New Zealand in March and Japan, at least I'm figuring it out, is August. My vegan diet. I'm just going to keep right on Perfect. training. And wow. sure enough, so here you are, you're in Japan. Line of my next yes. there. So, but Jap what was unique about this one? <laughs> uh, this was coming down the final uh, 100 yards of the finish line. And the people, as you can see them all clapping and cheering. And I was really so excited. In fact, I was in tears. There were tears storming down. I was so excited and happy. And because Continental had sponsored me, they arranged for the publicity, just like I got in New Zealand. Mm -hmm. And so all these reporters and photographers came all around me. And all and I was, so, you know, I got a first place there. I was the oldest female, <laughs> one of the few females at that time. And these were all young men, and every one of them would light up a cigarette. You know, oh, this no. is Japan, and they all smoke. They, right, they had no idea right. it was unhealthy. Back in the day. And I, I couldn't believe it. And so the reporter started asking me questions, and I'm fanning the air. I, Can we get away from this smoke? Right. And they looked at me, you know, yeah, what's the matter? <laughs> you know, yeah, what's wrong, what's wrong with, with smoke? It's just smoke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, and so when I got back, I went to Dr. McDougall and I told him of this experience and he said it's, they don't get lung cancer because the diet is that powerful. Mm. And I thought, that's incredible. These men at that time, they all smoked, but right. they were all on a diet of, just like in China, rice and veggies primarily, even for breakfast. They don't have bacon and eggs for yes, breakfast. They, don't. they have they don't. miso wow. and rice and it's the diet. Yeah, it's the totally, diet. Totally wow. the diet. So. <laughs> so the next slide shows a room full of trophies, <laughs> over yeah. a thousand trophies yeah, yeah, yeah. from yeah. races, <laughs> from 100 meter dashes to ultra marathons. All yeah. thanks to your diet, really, yeah, Ruth? Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and every every one of those has some really great memories. I mean. It's, it's been the most amazing life uh, that I was so, that I fell into and, as you said, take, took advantage of it. I, I acted on it and, um, and then I thought, you know, on my bucket list, I'm too old to do the Olympics. I could have been an Olympic triathlete, but they didn't have them then at that time. <laughs> but I found out that there was a senior Olympics. Wow. And I thought, oh my gosh. But there was none in Hawaii. Okay. I had to go to Arizona 
for the Nationals. Mm -hmm. And so I have got all the information and flew there, found out I was the only one from Hawaii. The only uh, senior oh, from Hawaii? Yeah, to do the And so the did senior. the other countries have more seniors? Uh, yeah, yeah. At that year, this was 1992, yes. and it was so back pre then. pretty new. Yeah. Wow, what a great uh, honor that you were the torch. Weren't you the torch carrier? Yeah, yep. Yeah. Wow. This was uh, for our senior Olympics. Um, yeah, carrying the torch. So wow. And and wow. how many gold medals did you win at the senior Olympics? In eight. You I won eight. eight. Yeah, one for the triathlon, and I did three others that were. Uh, like a 10k race and a 5k and a 15 meter wow yeah, girl yeah, you got yeah. so many medals and accolades <laughs> yeah. to your name and yeah, yeah. it's amazing yeah. you know we're yeah. just as i said i didn't yeah. know all of that behind you all the great amount, amounts yeah. of accomplishments but i know yeah. the the yeah. brilliance that you had when you met dr mcdougall oh, carried yeah. you through this great life that you had yeah and you know with that movie the documentary forks over knives to have two people from hawaii represented in that documentary That's is amazing right. yeah, yeah you know we're going to come to an end to this show but i know i would love for our audience to be able to find out where they can get more information from you Ruth. please do yes. i spend a lot of time on email because on my website mm -hmm. It has uh, some information on there. Uh, that's, yeah, that wasn't my idea, <laughs> the living legend. Um, I can't remember who came up with it. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, and then I've written a bunch of books. Uh, let's see, go down a little further. Oh yeah, there's Forks Over Knives. That's, that was running in Canada. Uh, oh, my editor uh, was, uh, started running as a result of, editing a race for life and he said you know i figured out you've been running for almost 50 years we need hey, to write woo! a book on lifelong running thanks to those good old fruits and yeah, vegetables yeah. right and Being then people strong. started uh, emailing me with questions mm -hmm. and so on my website there's a button for ask dr ruth and wow. so yeah go down further down to the bottom Further mm -hmm. down, 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 <laughs> down, down. Oh, down. all your books. Oh, it's not on oh. there. It's on the, the first well, page. Well, when they go to your website, they'll be able to find <clears throat> yeah, it there. Yeah, yeah. So we're just yeah. so grateful, um, Ruth, Dr. Ruth, <laughs> that you joined <laughs> us today to just give us some encouragement and some hope oh, that there's a future God. even behind a diagnosis. And that's why forks over knives. And that's, that's why it's right. so critical, the greatest love story of all. So I want to just say mahalo to you, Ruth, for taking the time to be with us today and to get your message and your heart out to all of us here. Mahalo, Ruth. It's my pleasure.